Hello. In this short video, I want to introduce the uh, .NET uh, Global Tool version of Cake and how we can go about using that to uh, run our build scripts. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I have Visual Studio Code open here, uh, just in a blank uh, folder. And what I want to do is I want to uh, I want to run a build using the .NET. Uh, global tool version of Cake. Now, you might be familiar with using, uh, historically, the cake.exe, uh, which required uh, the .NET Framework or, or Mono if you were running on uh, Mac or Linux. So the .NET uh, global tool version of Cake allows running in environments, uh, or maybe on build agents, uh, whatever you're running your builds, uh, where you don't need to have the .NET Framework installed and you don't need to have the Mono uh, uh, mono available on those machines either. Uh, as long as you've got the uh, .NET uh, CLI installed, then uh, you'll be able to run the builds. So the way that we're gonna do that is we are gonna uh, recommend using the uh, a .NET tool manifest. Now, what I'm gonna discuss in this video is uh, covered in the documentation on the Cake website. So there'll be a link to that in the description below, uh, but I'm just gonna walk through that. So I'm gonna run uh, the .NET, uh, I'm gonna run .NET, uh, new tool manifest. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a .config folder for me. And in there, there's going to be a .NET tools JSON file. So by default, it just has the top level information that uh, is required by this particular JSON file. And if I run another command, which is .NET tool install cake.tool, specifying the version number uh, 0.38.4. So that's the current uh, latest version of Cake. If I go ahead and run that, then it's going to update the .NET Tools JSON file to specify that that is the uh, version of Cake that I want to run when I'm, or, or rather, when I run .NET Cake, uh, that's the version that I want to have available to me. And then the, the way that I'm the way that I do that is I'd run the .NET tool restore command. So what it's going to do, if it's not already available, it's going to install the tools that are defined within that manifest file. So my build process. Uh, so before uh, using the uh, .NET Cake uh, Cake.exe, I might have had a uh, PowerShell Bootstrapper or a uh, uh, build.sh file which would do the work of making sure that all of the necessary components were on the file system ready to be executed. Uh, so it would have uh, reached out, downloaded the Cake uh, NuGet, pa NuGet package, it would have extracted it, it would have put it on the path, it would have made it available uh, for executing. So the similar process here is to run this command, the .NET tool restore, and then it will ensure that the uh, version of the tools specified in this manifest file are available and if they, they're not, they'll install them. So having done that, I can then attempt to run the command that's uh, listed in the JSON file there. So I can run .NET cake. Now, for me, at the minute, that's gonna fail because I don't have a, a, a build.cake file. I don't have a cake script uh, in, this, uh, in this project yet. So let's go ahead and create that build.cake file. So in here, I'm just gonna do a very simple uh, cake script. So I'm just gonna call this default. And then in here, uh, I'm just going to use the information alias to write out uh, hello world. If I can spell it properly. And then down here, I'll just do a run target method and we'll just call target. So into there, I'll create a var target that is just looking for an argument that we can pass in. And in here, we will call this target. And then in here, we'll give it a value of default. So there's nothing special here in terms of what uh, the cake script is doing. We're literally saying uh, create a, a target variable into that, look for an argument called target. If there's not one, uh, make it the uh, default value and then go ahead and define the task and then run that target. So if I clear this out and then I run .NET cake again, then it will use the .NET global tool version of Cake to execute that Cake script. So here we can see that it called the default task, it wrote out hello world, and then it gave us a summary of the build process. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, like I say, it was just a short video to uh, introduce you to uh, the, the Cake.NET global tool if you haven't seen it already. Um, so going forward, the, the Cake team will be recommending that uh, the global tool is the way forward 
uh, in terms of uh, executing Cake. Uh, we're still going to be uh, uh, publishing uh, uh, the full .NET Framework version of Cake, so it's not going away. Uh, it's just that uh, the way things are, are going in terms of build processes and the way that uh, the tooling is going, uh, it makes sense to use uh, the .NET CLI going forward. So if you are happy with what you're doing, uh, nothing's going to change. But uh, going forward, you will see some updates to the documentation on the Cake website to reflect uh, this new guidance. So uh, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to uh, drop a comment uh, in the uh, video section below uh, or hit me up on Twitter and uh, I'll do my best to answer your questions. So thank you very much.